Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unified Network Application version 7.376 was released just a couple weeks ago. Today is December 7th of 2022. And because I've been running it a bit, I wanted to follow up and do a review on it. Now, what I won't be reviewing is some of the new VPN features because I still don't recommend the Unify routing devices. And a lot of people seem to be a little upset by this as I can read through the forums and see lots of upset Unify Dream Machine Pro users. And that's because a lot of these new features that are mentioned in here, which we'll go over briefly, like the updated VPN support, which technically would make my video where I said Unify has a weird way of making VPNs. That video is linked down below. They only updated the Unified Dream Machine SE to get these new features. So if you have a Unified Dream Machine Pro, which is really not that old of a product here in 2022, it's only a few years old. It sounds like these features may not be coming to you because they're not going to go to the 3.0 Unify OS with the older Dream Machines. Now, if someone can find a link to prove me wrong, please leave it in the comments or let me know how to find it. But after some searching, I just keep finding posts on Reddit and inner forums or people who seem to be quite aggravated that their Dream Machines that are not the SE version um, don't appear to be able to get any of these updates. Now, they can get the new network application version 7.376. They just don't get any of the new VPN features and some of the things that, well, are the reasons why I don't really recommend any of the Unify routing devices. So I wanted to throw that out there in the beginning and mostly what I'm going to be focusing on is how we use it as a self-hosted multi-site controller and how we manage our clients with it, which is going to include the APs and switches. I have a few other videos where I've kind of discussed this and I also have a tutorial because the big requirement for 7.3.76 is the Java 11. And that's why I made an install video to show you how to install the self-hosted controller, either setting it up fresh, or if you want to restore from backup. But basically, I recommend uh, following that video before you do an update or read through the forums. There's ways you can remove the old Java version and then install the new Java version and update. And there's a few files you have to delete which is why I made it a much simpler, shorter video of just reinstall, restore from backup, and all your settings should be good. Now, before we dive into the details of this video, let's first. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now let's start here with the release notes for Unify Network Application 7.3.76. And they do have a note right here about not upgrading the UDM, UDM Pro running Unify OS 1.12 and older. This is because of an upcoming migration from Unify OS 1.12 to 2.4. Please note they didn't say to the version 3, as I noted earlier. But this is another thing if you're using the older cloud key, the first gen cloud keys, those are now dropped. And I think they should have been dropped before you even went to seven. There's people may have a debate about that, but those things are really slow. They've been around for a long time. So I think they had a good life and a good run, but their time has come and they're just a little bit too slow and not powerful enough to really host and run this application. Now, if we start scrolling down here, the things we'll talk about in a second uh, will be in the UI changes, but this is also where you do require, if you're using the SE, that Unify OS 3.0. This is that reference I made earlier about the new VPN features that are a highlight of this for their routing equipment are exclusive to things that are running the Unify OS 3.0, as in the Unify Dream Machine SE currently. And if I'm not mistaken, it also rules out their USG line as well, because it also doesn't run the Unify OS 3.0. Now, there's a long list here, and I'll leave this list uh, for you to read through, but let's actually talk about what it looks like. Now, one of the first things I noticed when we switched to the new version is this. Now, I'm going to blur out my client names in here, but they made this with just a nicer scroll. So you, when you go up and down for the sites, instead of them just kind of spanning the screen, and they do have the search here, so we can switch pretty quickly. For example, right to my house. Uh, and it's just a little bit faster, a little bit snappier after I updated it. Maybe that was like that from a previous version for the speed, but overall it's made a nice little bit of enhancement to the UI here. The next thing we're going to talk about is going over to settings. 
and they have a restore defaults right here. Let me zoom in, restore defaults. Now the restore defaults is something we end up doing quite a bit for people. Um, Unify giving people a lot of knobs to turn and a lot of options to change frequently means the installation problem they run into is a non-default setting for reasons I'm not really clear. Someone in some forum said, hey, if you turn all these knobs, it will, well, fix it or make things faster. Uh, not everything needs to necessarily be tuned. So this is nice when you're not sure what you did, you goofed around with settings, you can just click the restore defaults and put everything back to a default setting. And one of the other changes they made is over here in the client listing. So we're gonna search for one of the clients here, like Brett Desktop. We find the results, we can click on it, and then we can look at the insights. And the insights will tell you Brett Desktop has connected to default. Default network is what it's referring to. This will also work for Wi-Fi devices. Also gives you a pivot point here for seeing all. And this is another change they made. So here's a list of actually all the different devices as they've kind of moved around or connected and disconnected from different networks or different wireless. And I like the way each one of these lets you pivot. So we can say this device has roamed from LTS Office 6 to the hallway LCR. And you can click on any of these and it will bring you to that point. So they just made a lot of nice little UI changes to make this more convenient. So if we go here, back to the Brett desktop or like Pi KVM is right here. If we look over here to the Pi KVM, it brings us right to the device. It leaves the last search. We're going to go ahead and reset the search and just put this over here. Pi KVM and the insights. Here's all the connect and disconnects from that particular device. This is actually really nice in terms of UI elements being all connected to make it easy to go back and forth to find each thing you're trying to trace out. Or when you only have this, maybe you want to start building a list of what it is and what device this may be. I may not know the name of it yet, but this kind of gives you some of the ideas. It clearly doesn't want to give up its DNS name or it's not logged in here. Now I do use PFSense as my firewall, and that is also why some of the DNS information may be missing within the controller itself because it's not using one of the Unify routing devices. But nonetheless, it's nice that they've built these ish, built these in so I can go through and look at what's connected to each device and kind of get a quick history of any of those devices or clients that were connected to them. Now, going back over here to system logs, you can also see critical updates that are in there, admin activities that were done and who did them, client and access point. And the access point logs are also just telling you what channels were changed because I have it on an auto scan. So it's going to say, the system has moved from channel 112 to channel 100 to avoid detected interference. I leave these on with the auto and I haven't had a problem, but nonetheless, I like the fact that it does offer this insight so you can see what's going on and what was changed in there. And then of course, correlate that to any other logs you may have for people experiencing problems. Now next, let's go over here to system settings, to system, advanced, and we wanna have the debugging tools. Now the debugging tools are the terminal connections. So I want those on. And for some reason, those somehow got turned off through one of the updates and it was also moved to here. I'm trying to remember where that was before, but this is where that option is if you wanted any of your debug terminals to be re-enabled. And they've also don't have the debug terminal anymore where you can just click the IP address. I'm not sure when that went away, but that was actually one of the things I used to like when they had that as an option. You can just click the IP address, it would open up a debug terminal. I think when he moved to the new UI, uh, that went away. But if we go to settings, we go down here at the bottom, we can now click it here and it opens up a debug terminal. This is actually really helpful when you're using the controller to be able to get inside of another network and have instant access to a command line or look at some of the details on any of the devices. You can do this. You can actually go into var log, go through and look at messages and dive deeper into something if I need to. Now, generally I push things to a syslog server to make that easier, but I like the fact that I have access to the debug terminal right here without having to actually SSH into each device if I don't need to. Now, the next change I made is in the way you handle port management with the devices and the switches. So if we go here to this Plex Mini, we can look at the ports, we can pull up the port manager for the Flex Mini, and then we can see it's connected to port eight for this device. So then we can go port eight back rack, click on ports, go back over to the port manager, and now we're at these ports. What if I need to keep tracing where that was up? Well, this is uplinked here to the production rack. So then we can go over here, port manager, and now we're at the port manager for the production rack. I actually like the way they allow you to pivot to the different switches. So if you're trying to sort this out, once again, this is that 
UI element enhancement that I'm seeing. And this is me not hating anymore on the new UI interface. I actually think they finally got it really polished up well. These cross-linking to make resources easily clickable so I can go between either another switch if I click here, or in this case, this is actually going to pull up the LTS UNVR Pro that we have. So I can actually see the devices that are attached to there and get those insights as well. So it's not just for switches. And then I can figure out where this device is connected to and keep pivoting back and forth. So whatever this device is, this is what it's plugged into and then pivot back and forth. Now we're back to the USW Pro aggregation. Overall, I do really like these improvements and I've actually found this to be really stable and work well. Now, if you're having trouble getting your older version of Unify Network application updated, that's why I made that video that is linked down below that shows you how to do a fresh install and just grab the backup from your old one, throw it into the new one, and it restores fine. This is how I did mine. I know there's ways you can go through, delete some of the Java uh, libraries, remove the old version of Java, and install the new Java 11, get it working, but I didn't really have a need. It's just a basic VM that just hosts my Unify network application. Now, we are using the multi-site instance because we use a central server that we host to manage all the clients that, well, we manage their networks for, um, and it works perfectly fine for that, but none of them really have to deal with any of the Unify routing. It's just managing switch and access points. So it's still a pretty lightweight VM overall to be able to manage that many sites in a single controller. Now, as far as if you want to host it in the cloud and doing that, I am working on some updated videos for that. Uh, hopefully, depending on how many comments I get for people that want to understand that better, I will talk about how to set up your own cloud multi-host controller and set the DNS and everything else. Uh, comments asking me to do it often encourage me and drive future videos on this channel. But anyways, leave your comments and concerns down below. I'll leave links so you can read through and see all the different bug fixes and changes because there's a lot more than I took the time to cover just in this video. Uh, if there's something you want me to cover more in depth about Unify, let me know uh, or head over to our forums for a more in-depth discussion. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.